If you're an employee at one of the 700,000 businesses that use Slack, you're probably in there all day, every day, just like I am. So why is it that only the biggest SaaS products have Slack integrations to send messages directly to where their users are during the workday? If you've ever built a Slack integration from scratch, you know it can be a difficult process. From handling the multi-step OAuth flow to querying and storing a user's Slack channels, there's a lot to think about. At Knock, it's been possible for a while to use Slack as a channel in your notification workflows. So we're excited to announce the launch of our newest product, SlackKit. SlackKit is a collection of embeddable UIs and APIs that help you add a Slack integration to your existing SaaS product in hours, not days or weeks. Using the new Slack auth button component from our React package, you can easily handle Slack OAuth flows and save access tokens onto tenants. Then with the Slack channels combo box component, you can map public and private Slack channels onto objects and then use both of those to trigger workflows that send Slack messages into your user's workspace. So let's take a look at an example app I created to see how this works in more detail. All right, so I have this example application open on the right and the code base for this example open on the left. And what I wanna do is walk through the example app to sort of show you how this works in practice while also pointing out a couple of the key points in the code base that I think are worth taking a look at. So first things first, there's obviously a lot of environment variables that we're gonna need for this application because we're gonna need things like the Slack client ID, then a bunch of values from NOC, including public and private API keys, in addition to the Slack channel ID that you get when you create a new Slack channel in NOC. So this step is just gonna check that you have all of these um, before you can proceed. And if we click next and go to the next step, there are also additional things that we're going to need to define uh, around knock resources. And these would typically be things that your application's business logic would provide. So as a user logs in, you know, what organization or tenant are they a part of? What object collection is does your object live in? What's the object ID that they're operating on? You know, what's that user's ID? And then what workflow you actually want to execute uh, when we do this. So right now, all of these are hard coded in a function in this get app details function inside of appdetails.ts to sort of draw a boundary between what your application might provide as an environment variable and the certain values that you would get from your application's business logic as it runs. Um, so before we get into anything else, I did wanna draw our attention over here to this providers.tsx file. Now, if you've been paying attention to our latest releases around the React package, you know that we introduced this top level knock provider just a couple of weeks ago. And this, the job of this top level knock provider is to really handle all of the authentication mechanisms between a user and knock, right? We have the API key, we have their user ID, you know, their host URL, and this user token if we have enhanced security mode activated. Now we've also introduced another provider that sits one level below the knock provider called the knock Slack provider. And what this does is this provides some context to all of the other components that we're gonna look at as a part of this example app. And so this knock Slack provider takes two props, the knock Slack channel ID. So again, this is the ID that you get from knock when you create a Slack channel, and then a particular tenant, right? The tenant associated with that particular user. Um, so let's go ahead and click next and we'll get into sort of our first example of our Slack kit component. Um, so if we click next here, we can see that we have this inside of this Slack auth wrapper component. We have this Slack auth container and then we also have a Slack auth button. So the Slack auth container sort of provides this nice looking outer layer and then the button really provides all of the functionality. So the auth, Slack auth button component takes two props, the Slack client ID, and this is a value that you get from Slack when you create an app, so a public client ID, um, and then you, and you've already, and you've also given your, at this point, you've given your client secret to Knock when you configured that Slack channel. So Knock stores that, and we'll use that to facilitate this OAuth process that we're about to demonstrate. Then we also pass it in this redirect URL. And this is just so that when we're done with the OAuth flow, we, we know where to get sent back to. Um, because part of what these components 
make a lot easier is this OAuth flow. So right now you can see that I've got this nice state represented here showing that I'm already connected to Slack, but let me go ahead and disconnect that. And then we'll connect again, just so you can see that uh, from, from end to end. So if I click connect to Slack, uh, that component is going to create this pop-up window um, and load up uh, Slack's OAuth flow. So I'll go ahead and select my test Slack instance and then click allow. And then once that's done, you know, I get all of that stuff. Uh, it sends all of the details back to Knock. Uh, Knock's URL handles that callback for you, stores the access token on your Knock, on whatever tenant you've decided, but in this case, the Knock Projects tenant. Um, and then, you know, our button update showing that we've got that connected state. So great, that's the Slack auth button in Slack auth container. Now let's hit next in this example app and then let's take a look at the Slack channels combo box. So now that we've stored our access token on the knock projects tenant, what we also wanna do is make some associations between objects and Slack channels. So we do that using this Slack channels combo box component. And now this is gonna take one property and it's an object and the name is kind of long, but we want it to be very specific about naming this, right? So this is your Slack channels recipient object. So this is an object that lives in knock identified by the object ID in the collection that is going to store all of the channel IDs that you select from your particular Slack workspace. So if I click into here, I can select, you know, one or multiple channels and you can see that, you know, the, this component is gonna update as I do that. Um, and if you want them to be private channels, the Slack bot that you created needs to have been invited into those channels. So that's one caveat to keep in mind. But I can go ahead and select those things. And then when I'm done, I can go ahead and click out. And all of that stuff behind the scenes has been uploaded to uh, this object's channel data. And that's what we're gonna look at in the next step. So if we click next, we'll go into this confirm channel data step. And you don't have any choices to make here. This was really just an explanatory step so that we could demonstrate to you exactly how all this stuff works together, right? Because we've talked about the tenant, talked about your object recipient, and we've already made some decisions about what we want to store on Slack and what we don't. And here we can see that in action. So in this tenant section, right, we've gone out and pulled the channel data from the knock projects tenant to show you, hey, this is where that access token is stored. So this is a channel data on the data, you know, dot token property, have this access token that stores your Slack access token for use in workflows. Now the same thing is down here with the object recipient, right? We have channel data attached to that repo to object and each one of those channels is stored on this connections property. So there's an object with a channel ID that references that particular channel. So as you pass these things into a workflow, Knock knows to look on the tenant for that access token and then look on the object for those channel connections and then they'll send those messages appropriately. And say for example, we wanted to come back here and update something and maybe we only wanted one channel. We can unselect that and click next again. And then you can see here that, you know, we have one less connection than we just did a second ago. All right, so hopefully you're with me. Um, we're really almost done because we're gonna go ahead and click next. And then all we're gonna do here is test our workflow. So now on this step, we can trigger our workflow. And this code sample is pretty much behind the scenes, exactly the same code that we're gonna run in this Next.js server action to trigger your workflow. So you can see we've passing in this new issue, um, workflow key, then as our recipient, we're going to pass in our object, right? Our Slack channels object recipient. So we're gonna pass in this repo as our recipient. We're gonna pass in knock projects as a tenant. And then here we're just getting the form data from this form down below to populate a message liquid variable in our message template. So if I just say, you know, here's a message from Slack as a part of the video. And then I go down here and I trigger this workflow. We'll see that it's gonna kind of process for just a second. And now if I hop into Slack and go into my random channel, we should see that, you know, that workflow executed the collab.io demo bot sent us a message using our particular message template. So awesome. 
Hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how you can use Slack Hit to simplify some of the backend work in creating a Slack integration for your application. Um, the code and all of the instructions to get this example app up and running are gonna be found down in the video description. Um, so definitely reach out if you have any trouble using them. We'd love to hear from you as you uh, explore a Slack integration for your product. Thanks for watching.